Thank you so much. For those of you joining us tonight on the Zoom call, you'll be able to ask questions or participate either in the chat or by raising your hand using the reactions button at the bottom of the screen. We will allow you to unmute and ask your question, participate live in that way, or you can uh, make any comments you have on chat. If you're participating with us and joining us on Facebook Live, either in English or Spanish, you can feel free to ask me when it questions, ask any comments, and participate by making comments on our Facebook posts. With that being said, we're excited about um, sharing the information about Urban Park Elementary School through this evening, and I, it's my pleasure to introduce the amazing principal for this school, Principal Lisa Falcon. Ms. Falcon, go ahead. Good evening, everybody. I'm very, very, very excited about what we're going to find out about tonight. I'm so glad you joined us. And um, I think we're going to find out some really good information. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us tonight. Thank you so much. And of course, we're very fortunate to have joining us tonight as well, the trustee for this district, Trustee Justin Henry. Um, trustee Henry, would you care to share any remarks at this time? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, definitely want to send appreciation for everyone taking the time out of their evening. I know everyone is busy. To hear this important news regarding recording uh, in Park progress school um again thank you for your time and there's many other things you can be doing thank you principal Falcon, for your leadership on the campus and i will give it back to you thank you again for joining us and for the leadership you share with um, making sure that we have excellence across dallas isd trustee henry um bond 2020 <clears throat> is making a lot of changes and headways across Dallas ISD, impacting the lives of young people and our scholars. Um, leading this effort is Deputy Chief of Construction and Bond Services, Mr. Brent Alfred. Mr. Alfred, if you would care to um, make remarks at this time. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, uh, Jackie. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Urban Park, I'm excited. Uh, you guys are one of the I think, crown jewel projects of the bond program. We're doing 14 of these replacement schools, and you are one of the lucky and fortunate ones to be in that list of replacement schools. So I'm excited about this possibility and what could happen. I think we put together a great team. You have a great architect with Glenn Partners, and also being uh, teamed up with uh, your program manager, the key to as our management firm. And this is just the beginning. I mean, this is a journey. Uh, we're looking at fall 2024, I believe, on this one. Uh, so this is the first step. You know, the trustees were very animate to get community input. And let's listen before we even put pen to paper. So that's what this is about. This is a design charrette. It's going to be very interactive. Uh, these architects are going to lead you through a series of questions, just get you to think about what uh, urban park could be in the future. So I don't want to steal the thunder. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our architecture team, led by Glenn Patrick. Oh, Patrick Glenn, sorry. <laughs> You're still muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. You'd think that uh, if I've done this before, I should know that I was on mute. So thanks again for the introduction, Brent. Uh, we're certainly happy to be here. Um, here's the agenda for tonight. So we're kind of right in the middle of welcoming and introductions and ground rules. And uh, we're going to spend about 15 minutes um, talking about existing building analysis, We've got some scope of work recommendations. Uh, we have a couple of activities that Brent just mentioned, a word association, and then a large group uh, listening activity. Uh, then want to go through some visual uh, taste test instructions that you guys will be able to do uh, on your own. So as I go through uh, just the welcoming and the introductions and the ground rules, I think uh, Jacqueline's already introduced uh, a few people already, uh, Trustee Henry and and Mr. Alfred. Uh, we do have Dakita Program Management uh, as part of our team, but uh, my name is Patrick Glenn. I'm the partner and the managing principal for Glenn Partners, which is the architect of record uh, for this project. Uh, we also have Aaron uh, Ewart, Jessica Mabry, Kim Wong, and Ben Doyle uh, on our call uh, to listen to all the wonderful ideas that you guys will be able to share with us uh, this evening. So a couple of things. Um, I'm not sure how many people are, are on the Zoom call versus Facebook Live, but we want to try to start on time and we want to end on time. Uh, we want to work together as a team and communicate openly and honestly, uh, respect the opinions, uh, give others uh, a chance to talk. Silence uh, does not always mean that you are in agreement. 
And there are no bad ideas at this point. So every member should feel uh, confident to bring up any ideas. So I think the role uh, that you will have in this process is you're going to be able to provide input to ensure that we design the best possible solution for Urban Park, uh, provide that critical information for us uh, that will be basically become the ingredients uh, for our design. Um, I think the community members agree to to seek and support solutions uh, that we believe will provide the best benefit for the students. And then I think it's also important that community members become ambassadors. So once action is taken, uh, let's try to be uh, honest with the spirit of our action and be ambassadors uh, on the decisions that we make tonight. So I do want to spend a little bit of time going through uh, the building analysis. Uh, I think this is important that uh, everyone understand why or how we have led to uh, tonight's events on engaging with the community. So I want to talk a little bit about the existing building history. So the, the existing uh, Peacock Military Academy was founded in 1894 in San Antonio, uh, but moved to North Texas in 1930. And the building that you see, and if you guys can follow my cursor, this building, which is part of uh, the existing building was actually meant to be an administration building to this uh, Peacock Military Academy, but in 1934 it it went bankrupt um, and uh, did not grow any further. But that one admin building has continued to stay on the campus um, since uh, 1938. The existing site, uh, as you see on the screen here, um, is at the corner of Jim Miller Road and Military Parkway, uh, two very, very busy streets um, along this intersection. Uh, <clears throat> but it is a 10 acre site, which is really great news. So you do have a lot of land. So the main entrance is to Plan South and there's a small, very small visitor parking and small uh, drop off to the, to the south. There's about another 44 spaces uh, to the east and another 25 spaces uh, that's kind of isolated to the to the west. There are uh, 10 existing portables on site, uh, mostly being used by the parent outreach or the Panther store. Just a couple of speech classrooms and special ed uh, classrooms are, are used in the in the portables. Um, but what's really great news um, that will help support uh, tonight's activities and discussion will, will be this existing play field uh, that is on the west side of the site. So it's a, we're uh, estimating about four to four and a half acres of free open land on the very far west side. That'll be critical on uh, supporting the idea of a replacement school. So a few things that we'd like to point out um, on the existing floor plan. Um, the 1930 building that we just talked about is, is highlighted in, in red, and we're going to dive into some, some issues uh, with that. The, the two flanking wings uh, were built roughly in the 1950s, and then the one uh, wing to the very far left is built in um, the 2008 era. So if we <clears throat> dive a little deeper into some of the planning issues of the school, we know that the administration um, is right sm smack dab in the middle of the school, but there are some isolated and distributed admin um, throughout the school, and there's no proper secure vestibule. So when you walk in, uh, you, you're not greeted um, in, in a secure vestibule where you do check in. Um, the pre-K and the kindergarten classrooms also do not have the proper toilets. Uh, and then there's a rogue uh, kindergarten classroom very on the far west of the site that's really not near the other, other, other kindergarten classrooms. Um, special ed is is either in those portables that we just talked about or uh, located in the top right hand um, corner of the of the site. Um, those should probably be more in the heart of the school or near the front entry with accessible uh, entrances and exits. Uh, the library is uh, kind of remote on the far left hand side of the, of the floor plan. The gymnasium is is under the current ed spec standards for the district. Uh, the art storage room is really disconnected from the art room, so you have to walk down the hall and across the hall to get to the art storage room. Uh, the cafeteria and kitchen are well below ed specs as far as size and, and capacity. And then there's a fairly long travel distance for all those little short legs for students to, 
especially this uh, corner of the building to walk all the way down to the cafeteria. So hopefully the, the opportunity to replace the school, we can um, resolve uh, a lot of these adjacency issues that we're seeing. Uh, up on the upper level, uh, second level, we are noting that the counselors are really isolated from the main administration. Those probably want to be closer to the, the main um, administration on level one. Uh, the SPED offices are located on level two, nowhere near uh, the current special education classrooms. Uh, first grade classrooms are also lo located upstairs. Um, and to go up and stay up and down stairs for those little bitty legs sometimes is, is difficult. Um, and all the classrooms in this wing of the building on the upper level really feels um, somewhat disengaged and disconnected to the, the main uh, heart of the school. So to go through some of the things that we're seeing, um, we immediately saw some existing building code issues, the construction type of the, of the 1930s building. Um, does not meet current uh, building code standards. Uh, it could lead to extensive renovation and unforeseen costs. I'll dive into that in, in a minute. Um, the second floor only has one uh, means of egress. Um, today's code, you need two means of egress. So uh, building a second means of egress could be ex extensive and very costly. Uh, the handrails and the stair uh, also do not meet code. The, the rise and the run of the stair and the height of the guardrail does not meet code. And the existing fire shutter door uh, is not movable and does also does not meet code or ADA requirements. So you're going to see a bit of a theme as I continue to go through uh, the next series of slides. So just bear with me, stay with me. Um, the cafeteria does not meet egress requirements based on the occupant loads and does not meet uh, current building code. Uh, the campus really lacks a dedicated uh, pickup and drop off uh, lane leading um, onto the street for queuing. Uh, it's really dangerous to be dropping off the kids uh, in the street, especially because Jim Miller Road and Military Parkway are so busy um, and very fast moving uh, vehiculars, uh, vehicles on that uh, on those roads. Again, there's no secure vestibule. So you walk in the front door and you uh, are really open to. Uh, peruse the, the main part of the school. You really need to be uh, forced into the administration area to check in. And, and then expansion of, of this middle building would really require a, a two-hour fire separation, just further adding uh, congestion issues and pinch points to the project. We had a, about a month ago, we had a structural engineer um, go out and do an analysis of the current structure. Uh, these are some of the things that uh, he has uh, found. So I'm just really gonna focus on maybe the comments on the right-hand side. Uh, the load ratings, uh, given the age and type of construction, um, it's likely the existing construction cannot support the code required loads, uh, structural loads, uh, at least some of the spaces, the areas of concern are the hallways, exit ways in the administration. Uh, the support of new elements, the new structural systems are not flexible. Um, the existing uh, structural elements are not flexible to support the new loads of mechanical equipment, folding partitions. Um, the existing structural systems are not flexible for eliminating load bearing walls. Um, the tight member spacing uh, being uh, load bearing wood members that are 16 inches on center, that really restricts uh, what we can do architecturally. And then the existing structural system, um, this engineer is saying will be costly and extremely difficult at best to modify for today's building code requirements and educational needs. So to show some of the pictures um, of what we're seeing, uh, the existing building is all wood framed uh, building. So you see uh, the wood rafters and the wood joists in the floor, uh, the wood flooring, um, the load bearing walls are wood studs and actually the roof is wood as well. So typically in today's modern buildings, you would see concrete or steel, not, not the wood. Um, so again, the typical exterior construction of a two-story building that in the ground floor conventional wood framing that I just mentioned. So that's, that's probably one of the biggest issues uh, on doing any renovations or uh, adding on to this building is the existing construction type is just really out of date. Uh, we're also seeing uh, plaster wrap co concrete columns above lay-in ceilings um, 
are failing due to uh, water infiltration and damage. You can start to see some of the plaster and the, and the water getting inside uh, the walls and the columns. Um, that's gonna be very costly to repair and fix. And then the existing um, uh, glazed tile block in the hallway is load bearing. It's very difficult and very costly to move that and to punch holes in that, move doors around, um, make any openings. There's actually a area on the second floor, which might be difficult to see in photo number two, where the structural framing is actually starting to separate in, um, and start to, to fall and fail. So you can see that right there at the door, it'd be costly to fix that. Uh, also see some existing concrete failing on the exterior uh, of the building in that 2008 edition. So again, just some concerns, um, nothing's gonna fall down, uh, but just in order to continue to uh, put money in this building, it's gonna be very uh, costly and difficult um, to bring the current structure up to today's code. Uh, some of the other issues, uh, the main entrance um, does not have the proper handrails or the ramps uh, to meet ADA. Uh, the restrooms on the second level, you actually have to step up into the restroom. So there's a, a floor change, as you see on number two, which does not meet code. Um, the auditorium does not have a ramp to get to the stage and the steps that do get to the stage uh, do not meet code, today's code. Um, there is some sloping floor. There's a sloping floor at the back of the auditorium, uh, right next to the door behind the seats does not meet code. The, the, um, the clearance issues inside the toilet rooms do not meet code. And a lot of the millwork and heights of light switches and thermostats are really beyond uh, code allowed uh, arm reach. Um, so we really want to solve those problems. Um, the sinks and millwork and the door hardware uh, that you see in uh, photo number two, the, the water fountains that you see in, in photo number four, all of those do not meet current ADA uh, requirements. Uh, the existing MEP and building envelope issues. Uh, so you can start to see the window units uh, being used at the existing original building. Um, the temporary AC, I believe uh, this was over the summer where we saw uh, these temporary AC units being used in the classroom. So obviously there's an issue uh, with the existing HVAC and mechanical system. Uh, the current HVAC system um, in the original 1930 and the 1950s portion of the school is an outdated two-pipe system. And for though, those that are not engineers on the call, a two-pipe system really is not built anymore because you're either in heating mode or cooling mode. You really can't do both. So uh, a cool morning that might be 40 degrees in the morning that you might want some heat, uh, but during the day it warms up to 70 degrees and at that point maybe you need some cooling. Uh, the existing system really cannot uh, manage between that, that temperature swing. And then the electrical uh, existing electrical equipment is really... Um, out of date and past its useful life. Uh, electrical panels are just open in the corridor, single pane uh, windows that really allow the solar heat gain to come into the building uh, and heat up those classrooms. And that existing two pipe mechanical system really just does not have the strength or the capacity to, to cool those rooms properly. That's why you're seeing a lot of blackout shades inside the, of the classrooms. Um, some on building envelope issues, the, the library does smell very musty, so we think that there might be some water infiltration issues. You're starting to see some buckets uh, located in stairwells because the roof is leaking. Uh, existing exterior materials are rotting and decaying. This is right uh, by the cafeteria in photo number four. You're starting to see some efflorescence and water damage on the 2008 building that's telling us that the the water's not getting out of the cavity of the building uh, properly. Educational adequacy issues, all of the, the classrooms are really uh, undersized and, and too small to serve um, the way Dallas ISD is teaching students today. So really need a little bit more room in those classrooms, a little bit more flexibility, they're very congested. Uh, teaching uh, walls don't meet the current educational standards, technology, the writable teaching surfaces, 
Uh, and again, the existing kitchen is woefully undersized, crowded, and does not meet the DISD TDG standards. Uh, again, we talked about the existing cafeteria being too small. The, the gymnasium is too small and too low. Uh, the library is really far uh, from the, the main part of the school. And again, existing classrooms just being uh, really, really crowded and undersized from uh, the typical modern school that DISD is building today. And a few more, few more things. Uh, the administration doesn't really have the proper space. It's undersized and overcrowded. There's offices being tucked into to storage rooms. Um, the MDF and IDF rooms, which are basically rooms that house the data server and the technology is, is being shared with storage or being shared inside uh, teacher lounges. Uh, the clinic um, and nurse doesn't have the proper separation from the cots and it's, it's woefully undersized. Uh, the toilet room in the clinic is, is too small and does not meet code. You can start to see a lot of the carpet in the uh, library, I believe, really coming um, up from the adhesive uh, storage, really just being tucked into hallways. So just not having enough storage because those are, we're trying to use those for offices or technology closets. So really a lot of issues um, in the existing building, whether they're building code issues or ADA issues. Uh, or structural issues or uh, just educational adequacy or technical design guideline issues. So we took um, this existing building analysis and uh, spoke with the district and uh, tried to look at um, our current budget. So if this were a, a renovation and addition project, uh, it would probably, the design schedule would probably be about 12 months and Construction would probably be about 36 months um, because in order to do construction on an occupied campus, we'd have to do it in bits and pieces a little bit at a time. So it kind of lengthens and draws out the construction. But if we've got um, the ability to do a new construction project, uh, the design schedule probably is roughly about the same, nine to 12 months, but the construction phase although my slide is incorrect, would be about uh, 15 months. So that's, that needs to be edited. That's, that's my fault. That would not be 36 months. That would be 15 months. So we'd be able to start construction sooner and finish construction much, much sooner. But if we look at the uh, cost impact, our current budget, just construction budget, is $23.8 million. But we're going to spend a lot of that money on preparing and resolving all the issues that we just talked about, construction type issues, building code violations, uh, building structure issues, the MEP infrastructure issues, the building envelope issues. And none of that's really being spent on the learning for the students. So we think that if, we, if we're able to add a little bit money to the budget, that's what the right-hand side um, is to show. If we were to think about this as a new construction project, and we're just finishing up a replacement school for Hawthorne Elementary, uh, we're the architect on that project. So if we look at roughly that size of building, about 82,000 square feet, um, combined with today's construction dollars, uh, we think that the a brand new building might run about 27.2, $27.5 million. So if we take our current budget that's really dedicated for renovating the building compared to the budget of what a brand new building would be, we're just about $3.5 million um, difference on having a brand new building. So we feel the delta of a $3.5 million dollar um, budget increase would add significant project value, some cost effective effectiveness to the budget while providing that 21st century learning environment for um, urban park uh, teachers and students, rather than spending all those taxpayer dollars on really costly and ineffective repairs. So what we would do is build that, potentially build that new building in that open play field you know, when that building is up and operational, we, have, we move all the teachers and all the students in, then we'd go back and tear down and remove the old outdated uh, building and then uh, rebuild parking and play fields. So we're kind of like flipping, flipping the site, so to speak. So here's the good news. I think the community definitely needs a new school. 
And I think that there was some potential mis misunderstanding in 2020 um, when the belief was Dallas ISD was going to potentially uh, tear down Urban Park and those students would be moved to other nearby schools. Well, that's not the case anymore. I think the current idea is to replace Urban Park, but do it with a new school on the, this same campus and really try to celebrate the legacy and the heritage of, of Urban Park. So there's plenty of space on the existing site for a new school. A new facility would create, tr would create a tremendous community support um, while really demonstrating the best use of those taxpayer dollars. A new facility would be able to provide a code compliant storm shelter, which is part of today's building code. And I think a new facility would provide Dallas ISD students and teachers that modern learning environment to thrive and prepare for tomorrow's future rather than spending those dollars on um, antiquated uh, building structure and, and MEP uh, systems. So I think that's really kind of the fork in the road that we're at right now. And I uh, really want to do a poll and I'm going to need uh, Jacqueline's help to do a poll. But we've got one question. And the question is, assuming Dallas ISD is able to fund the additional cost to build a replacement school uh, for Urban Park, what is your reaction? A, do I fully support uh, a new replacement school on the current campus? B, I support a new replacement school at the current campus, but want to learn more about the future design. Uh, C, I'm supportive of what's best for Urban Park students. Or D, I do not support a new replacement school for Urban Park. So if you're able to uh, use the polling feature, and we can probably see live time results, I'll give everyone a, a few minutes to, to answer the question. If you're joining us on Facebook, please um, feel free to submit your question to the poll um, as a comment, and we will share those as well into the total of the uh, in the total for the po tonight's poll. And again, the question is: Do you support a new replacement school for Urban Park Elementary? I think it's a good sign, at least the results that I'm seeing right now. What's that? Go for it. Okay, great. We're going to go ahead and shut the poll down now, but so far, we're seeing our polling results. Seven uh, of the people, 70% of those completing the poll support the new replacement school on the current campus, on the current campus. Um, an additional 20% are supportive, but want additional information. And 10% um, are uh, saying they want what's best for Urban Park students. So thank you so much for participating in the poll. If you're on Facebook, again, you can join and participate and ask questions as comments on the Facebook, uh, on Facebook as well. Thanks, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna move on to, so first of all, that is great news. It's very exciting to see the support. Um, I think we're making the right decision for what's best for uh, Urban Park uh, teachers and students. and. Um, it really warms my heart to see the, the community um, trying to make the right decision. And hopefully Dallas ISD will be able to find that extra few dollars and, and move forward on this replacement school. So let's just assume that's the direction that we're moving. We'd like to do what's called a word association activity. So this is really helping us set a vision um, on what uh, the design might feel like and behave and operate like. Uh, for Urban Park. So we've got um, four of these questions and I've got a series of words on the screen that you see. Let me move this out of the way. Um, I got a, a word bank, if you will, 
Um, and I've got these in English and I've got them in Spanish and I'll toggle back and forth. But in the chat, in the message chat, we would like for you to uh, tell us um, by picking a word. You can uh, do two words. You can do three words. But when you think of Urban Park Elementary School, what words come to mind? And you don't have to use these words on the screen. You can pick your own word. But these words on the screen is a word bank. They're word, it's a word bank to help you um, kind of get the juices flowing, if you will, um, and just to help um, kind of leave some breadcrumbs on some words that you might uh, not be thinking about. So when you think of Urban Park Elementary School, what words come to mind? And I'll flip over to the Spanish words so everyone can see that. So again, when you think of Urban Park Elementary School, what words come to mind? And just put those in the chat and um, hopefully we'll be able to save that transcript and we'll collect all of, all of the words and at some point in the future, we'll be able to report back and present back uh, all the words that everyone um, submitted. So I'll just toggle back and forth and we'll spend just two or three minutes doing this for uh, the four questions. And again, if you're joining us on Facebook, you can simply, we, we're posting the questions as comments on our Facebook live feed. If you go to that particular comment um, question, it says question number one, when you think of Urban Park Elementary, what words come to mind? If you can simply reply to that comment with um, the words that come to mind when you think about this wonderful school. could be historic, it could be uh, timeless, classic. We Why have a few coming through. This is great. Awesome. I'll flip back over to the Spanish words. Oh, wonderful. Great comments. Great comments. We have um, some of them. Let's share. Future, future high-tech STEAM Academy, a hub for the community. That's coming through the chat active, high-tech, and warm. Another great, another great suggestion. Then coming from Facebook, we have comfortable, um, motivating, inviting, engaging, engaging, innovative, warm, and relaxing. Great input, everyone. Please continue to share in both the chat room and on Facebook. All right, let's move to the second question. The second question is, what is your favorite part of the campus or the school, past or present? And again, they're the same words, but you don't have to use these words. You can come up with your own words. And I'll move to the Spanish. So again, when you think of Urban Park, what's your favorite part of the campus or the school, past or present, because if we're going to set sail on a new vision for this campus and, and for this school, we, we want to know what's important, um, what's great about the current campus, past or present, so we can honor that and celebrate uh, those things on the campus. I'll flip back to the English. And again, if you're joining us on Facebook, please share your thoughts or your favorite memory. What's your favorite part of Urban Park, either in the past or present? And if you're on our Zoom, please feel free to share in the chat room. Or if you would like to go off mute and share in person, you can as well. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Facebook, um, Facebook um, friends, for communi communicating 
um, one of our Facebook listeners is saying that the, their favorite part of the campus is the community. Oh, that's great. That means we need to find space on the campus for the community to come together. All right, let's move on to the third question. The third question, um, when you think of a 21st century school, what words come to mind related to collaborative learning that might help reinforce our planning and design? So obviously students are learning differently today than maybe 30 years ago, especially 40 years ago when I was an elementary st school student. Um, the learning process is much different uh, today. So when you think of today's schools, what words come to mind related to this collaborative learning movement um, that might help reinforce our planning and design? And again, I'll move to the Spanish words as well. Oh, great. We have a comment from the last question that we had that, um, that Urban Park has the best community and families. Oh, that's wonderful. And again, if you're joining us or participating on Facebook, we encourage you to share and participate. This is an interactive session. So we're looking, oh, fantastic. Thank you. Um, that we are looking for you to share your thoughts and your comments. We do have a couple of things um, regarding the, the question number three about what um, words come to mind related to creating a 21st century learning environment. Um, and that the esteem, coding, and makerspace are the three things that are popping up from Facebook. And I would also challenge you to think beyond the 21st century, the current school is, um, what, 70, 80 years old. So we want to make sure that we're thinking forward thinking, not just of what students need now, but what students will need in the future. Our theme for Bond 2020 is to think big, B-I-G. That's bold, innovative, and generational. So Urban Park, let's hear some of those bold, innovative, and generational um, thoughts from you guys. We have some other things going through the chat room. Um, engaging, inviting, colorful 21st century learning and tech for our students to be ready for, for the global world. All right, so we'll move on to question number four, um, which is the last question in this word association activity. So we know that the urban park mascot is a panther. So what is the panther mascot symbolic of? When you think of the panther mascot, what do you think? We do have a few more comments coming in from the last question. We can go ahead and get those sure. included as well. Um, one, one person says movable walls and outside um, areas, building areas, movable and transitional building spaces as well. Great. Yeah, flexibility. That's definitely something to uh, keep in mind as far as preparing for an unknown future is keeping the building as flexible as we can. And again, the final question we have for our Facebook listeners is what does this, what is the Panther mascot, the school mascot, the Panther symbolic of it? What does it mean to you? I know in other, we've had other charrettes. Um, the community has been very passionate about those mascots. And especially making sure that there's, they're being um, treated in a very respectful manner. Sure. So we want to hear about exactly what does that panther mean to Urban Park? We have a few things coming through on Facebook. Strength and greatness. Greatness is a great attribute there. Yeah, we want to be able to design the interior um, and have that school spirit and that brand 
of the panther uh, for everyone to see and put that on display. Fantastic. So I'm actually going to put the principal on um, on blast here. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Falcon. You must have known I was going to call you out. Um, so, so, um, sophisticated, energetic. If you don't mind going um, off mute and just kind of sharing, what do you think, what are your students, when, they, when you talk about them being proud panthers, what is your students, what are your, your students, if you could speak to that? Um, where my students are when they're acting like proud panthers or what they think a proud panther is. Okay. What they think so a proud panther is. Mm -hmm. A proud panther is somebody that's focused and has a vision that we're working on. And we say our campus creed every single day and it's about our leaders and that we're going to be responsible and respectful and um, kind to everybody. So our panthers, we're on the move, but we're focused and we're kind. And we're trying to move into a STEAM academy. So we're um, we're ready to propel into the future at the same time. And the, and the Panthers fast. So we want to be fast too. Hey. Love it. Fantastic. I'm going to share those in the, in the chat room. So make sure they show on the transcript and thank you for sharing those comments and speaking on behalf of your students. All right, maybe just another minute, Jacqueline, before we move on. I think, yeah, about a minute, minute or so. Okay. I think we're good to move forward. Okay, awesome. Well, it looks like we're ahead of schedule just by about five minutes, so that's that's great. So another thing that we want to do, and this is a large group listening activity, um, we're hoping that folks might be able to unmute and verbally speak and answer these questions. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can certainly um, write in your response uh, into the chat. But <clears throat> we, again, this is we feel strongly that we don't know this campus as well as the teachers and the community. So this whole exercise uh, today and tonight is us listening to you. We need to understand and learn from you so we understand this campus uh, just as well as you do. Before we start putting any pen to paper, we need to understand really what's working well on the campus so we don't disrupt that and don't change that. So the question number one is related to the campus in school operation, what currently works well? We wanna understand what's working well on the campus so we don't, uh, as we move into a new design that we um, try to respect the things that are working well. And again, if you join us on Facebook, please feel free to share your thoughts, um, your suggestions, recommendations as comments, and we'll share those live here as well. We do have one from the in the chat room currently. Um, this relates back to um, the previous questions, I believe. I think it would be important to incorporate as much of the historical building, i.e. maybe some of the light fixtures, cornices in the new building as design elements. Sure. Okay. And again, if you're on, if you're joining us on Facebook, the listening activity right now is related to the campus and school operation. What currently works well? And if you're on the call, feel free to unmute and share your thoughts or to type them into the chat, whichever is more convenient for you. I'd love to hear from Ms. Falcone if, if. Uh... All right. I have no problem talking. I just don't want to <laughs> steal anybody's thunder. But I will say, and I think I shared this even with uh, Trustee Henry when we spoke, um, even though our campus has very old parts and we have a lot of things that are not working, um, we have really increased our technology. Um, we do have, I promise you, a state-of-the-art uh, makerspace that we really haven't been able to utilize as of yet because of COVID, but we are ready. I mean, when, we, when I say we have a makerspace, um, we have 3D printers, we have coding for everybody. All of the kids had devices even before the district gave them. So we've got techn technology going on. The district's really supported us in that. So we'll take all of that to the new building and actually be able to enhance on that. Because even though we have a makerspace, it's basically part of the library and it's pushed in a corner. So we definitely need to 
broaden that because I want everybody from p my pre-K three students all the way through fifth grade to be able to code and go in there and create, do robotics and build things. Um, and we we are all equipped for that. So we can take that to the new building, the old building, but we need to make space for that. My kids pre-K three on are already little tech wizards. I mean, they it amazes me how, what they can do with their iPads and their computers. So the kids are there. Um, and they're ready for it. Um, even though we're also very spread out, which we are, I can easily get my 10,000 steps in, walking <laughs> from one side of the building to the other. But we do, um, we are able to put most of our classes together. Um, he's right, we do have one kindergarten that's way over there because we ran out of rooms with bathrooms. But um, for the most part, you know, third grade is with third grade, fourth grade is with fourth grade. My special ed units are with each other. But we would definitely like to enhance on that in the new building. But they don't feel isolated. And poor, that poor kindergarten class that's on the new wing, they're probably going to be in the best shape because they do get more walking than anybody. Sure. But um, those are things that, you know, and we are definitely a family atmosphere. Um, and those are things that I don't want to lose. And I agree with the person who said on Facebook that some of the things, like you had a picture of our peacock stained glass that I would like to have somewhere in the building, there's a chandelier when you first walk in um, in the main building that would I would love to have somewhere too. So, and even that thing that you showed where we had the um, newsprint of JFK, that's something too that you know we do have deep history, and that is something I know that we could put in the new building and still innovate and bring my tech wizards, my pre-K threes. That's what I keep thinking about my pre-K threes. By the time they leave Urban Park, what are they going to? What kind of skills can we enhance for them? Sure. And I, I love hearing about the makerspace. Um, but what I don't like hearing is that it's tucked into a corner and we can't access it because of COVID. Sometimes in elementary schools, we have these wonderful innovative spaces, but no one knows that they're there. So we need to make sure they're accessible. We need to make sure that we provide some transparency so students walking by the corridor can see in and see some of their friends doing really cool activities and that really helps inspire curiosity and passion to go in there and do the same thing. Agreed. Anybody else feel brave enough to uh, maybe speak up? Well, I might put you on the spot again, Ms. Falcone, going to question number two. It's basically- We have people who are in agreement with the principal. Okay, um, and question number two is kind of the opposite. So again, related to the campus and school operation, what currently does not work well or is missing from the campus? Um, I'll go ahead and beat you, beat you to one item that we see all the time is the drop off and pick up. Um, not having those dedicated lanes off the street, that does not work well. And that's been um, consistent with our experience with Hawthorne Elementary School and some elementary schools in Fort Worth and other campuses around the Metroplex. So we've already seen that. Um, but what else is currently not working well or maybe missing from the campus? Um, and you hit, you're right, you hit the nail on the thing. That's my biggest fear every day is somebody, something happened to some kid because it is dangerous out there and we don't have the proper. So you're absolutely right about that. But we also, while we're on the outside is we don't have any shade. We do have some big, beautiful trees in front of the building, but we don't have any shade on the playground at all. And out, outdoor space is extremely important um, for mind breaks and um, just, just out there and get some energy and, you know, the kids to interact with each other but it's very hot we don't have any shade over our playgrounds and we definitely need that for sure um, as well as again the building is huge and I say we're close to it but it is a long walk from TC unit all the way over to the fifth grade which is and you guys know you walk with me and my parents know when they're coming for parent night or something you can literally get you know I don't know exactly how long but from that one end to the other end um, it's a long walk. Um, and so if there's ever an emergency, we'll be running and running really fast. Um, so those are things that we could get a more of a close knit building um, that would be better for everybody, um, more responsive and all the different things. Um, and obviously, as you pointed out, we are HVAC is something that we're struggling with. Um, and the district does have we have it going right now, but we could walk in tomorrow and, um, you know, we have to relocate people. But so far, we've been able to do that and nobody's suffered from it, but it would be nice to know every day 
that you know all buildings will all the rooms will be cool or warm whatever we need um, and then uh, the other things is yes the floors and just the the, the sloping and just our things so I want the building to be safer to we keep it you know under under watch but it, it would be nice to not have to worry about the floor sloping and things like that and the bathrooms and the water fountains and all of those things for sure for sure we've seen all those things too plus maybe a few others um we do have a comment coming through on facebook as well the shade for dismissal is very important and is currently missing Say that one more time, Jacqueline. Shade for dismissal. Oh, shade. And I'm assuming in shade for dismissal is an issue, then probably covering for drop off and pick up as well. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll feed into that as well. <clears throat> Ms. Falcone, do you dismiss out of the cafeteria? We dismiss our pre-K three and some of our TC unit kids that don't ride the bus. And that's the only place where we have a roof. Um, like if, my front dismissal where we do most of our dismissal because we dismiss our third through fifth graders plus all of their young schoolings. We have trees and we all get under the trees and we're a little bit better than what the back is. And the back is the K two. Um, and if you think the front's bad, the back's even worse. Um, they do have a metal covering over the uh, behind the portables that's too far away from where the cars are so they basically don't have a shade at all um, but we are keeping it separate again because of covid um, and because it would take us a very long time to do all this missile in one place <clears throat> so they're right we need shade what, what's but maybe the, with the shaded go ahead uh, go ahead finish your thought and i'll ask a quick, another question I was going to say, if we get the shaded playground, maybe that's something we could utilize. But also, if we have that proper drop off and pick up, we could do everybody in the same place. Um, and maybe it'll be by where the trees are, because those trees do provide lots of shade in front of the building. Sure. The main building. Um, what's the percentage of your students that are dropped off by parents versus bus? We do not have any bus students except our TC unit. So that's basically... 16 kids that ride a bus. Everybody else either walks or are dropped off and picked up in a car. But so that's are truly the, a community school. So that's a, uh, a good point to know. Um, how many, or what's the percentage of your students that walk versus being dropped off? Um, walking's not that many either. We, I literally do the walkers. So I have about 20. So we're talking way less than 10% of our kids that ride bus or walk. All of them are car riders for the most part. Gotcha. And what about doing- and we have, Oh, wait, I was going to say we have a couple. I forgot we have two bike riders. We're so excited about our two bike riders. We have two kids that ride a bike. <laughs> and what about during inclement weather, pick up and drop off? So we really don't, especially in the front, um, in the past we've had um, indoor dismissals um, and it takes a while, um, but yeah, if there's inclement weather, uh, weather uh, we definitely have to stay in the building because there is no place either in the front or the back that's safe. Now, if it's raining, we'll, we will go out, but thunder and lightning or tornadoes or um, hail, any of that we have to do from inside. All right. Well, maybe we'll move on to question number three here. So again, Ms. Falcone, you might have to be the, the spokesperson, um, but while keeping a focus on student learning, what are some potential operational enhancements that you'd like to see in the future? Okay, so like I said, I'm very, very proud of the district and everything that they have given us. We have these what are called classroom display boards and they are interactive with the kids. But if you saw those pictures that some of our classrooms are still look like they're in the back in the 1930s where we have, there was actually a chalkboard in some of those um, rooms that we saw. Those are really not conducive and I would like to have some more 21st century tools for the kids to learn beyond the laptop that might be in front of them or the iPad, but to have more interactive things, even whiteboards. Some of our rooms don't even have um, whiteboards. They still have the um, chalkboards or we make shift and put a whiteboard up there, but definitely more interactive things. Our kids are doing um, a lot more with technology and I wanna continue on that road, but at the same time, the room should, be able to enhance that. We, we need better Wi-Fi. Um, 
you know, different things like that. But if you look in what, if I would imagine a 21st century room, I definitely wouldn't see a chalkboard in there and also have more spaces for kids to collaborate. Sometimes our rooms are too small and we're, uh, we collaborate, but we're, you know, too close together. So we definitely, the rooms need to be bigger and just some more 21st century things and not a chalkboard unless we're making a historical picture of something. But other than that, I would, I could like to do without the chalkboards. Sure. <clears throat> I'll leave the question up there for a little while, just for, people to potentially add into the chat or respond on Facebook Live. And let me interject as well. This meeting is being recorded and will be shared on our Bond 2020 website. That's dallasisd.org forward slash Bond 2020. Um, there also will be a link there with the survey. So you can go in if you think about something, you're joining us on Facebook Live, you are, you're, you're here on the Zoom meeting and you, something happens after you say, oh, man, I wish I I wish I'd asked this. I wish I shared this. There will be plenty of opportunity for you to do so using the links found at www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. And it all in the same way, if you know someone who was unable to attend tonight's meeting, they can either look at us on Facebook Live and share their thoughts or again, um, look at the video at bond 20, dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020 and share comments and thoughts that way as well. We do have a cup, Patrick, we do have a couple of things coming through um, Facebook. Okay. Um, one, the classroom interactive technology sets are greatly needed and was something they would like to see enhanced in the future. And um, we have people agreeing to the fact that they need to have more flexible spaces and more tech, more um, interactive spaces for for technology as well in yeah, classrooms. Flexibility is uh, certainly a big driver in today's schools. You, you need spaces that uh, 30 kids can come together and do activities, but you also need some of the smaller spaces where uh, maybe a teacher is doing some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh, so some, some smaller spaces and then spaces in between. So large spaces for 30, spaces for maybe two to four, spaces for eight to 10, I think a, a variety and, and, a, and a diversity of those type of spaces are definitely needed to add that flexibility to support that collaboration, and all the different kinds of learning styles that are out there. If he, is there a fourth question you want to move forward? There is a fourth question. All right. All right. This is the last question for this uh, listening activity. How will we define success? Sometimes it is simple as being on time and under budget. Um, but from a community's point of view, how will we define success? And I'm certain Mr. Alf I'm certain that Mr. Alfred and Trustee Henry agreed that success certainly would be on time and under budget. Um, That's one of the priorities. <laughs> But I, from what I've heard so far, um, it's very family focused, very community forward. So the building and the campus needs to really promote family. Um, I think if we don't do that, we are not successful. So maybe some large gathering spaces on the outside of the building um, for all the wonderful families to come together and really have that community environment. I agree. And um, just as you spoke earlier about the fact that we have portables where we have our parent outreach uh, for our future students, but that's something that we want to continue with our students that we have. And before COVID, we had teacher uh, parents that were taking English classes and computer classes, and we want to get back to all that. And it would be, to me, successful if we have all those spaces for our um, families. And also that my pre-K three students leave this incredible building more than ready for middle school and high school and college and their career. Um, Professor Falcon, can you expand a little bit more about those, uh, those wonderful activities, you know, um, parent engagement things you were talking about, um, that's, fat, that's wonderful innovation on your part on your campus. Could you share a little bit more about, about that, um, the classes and, and the prepping for future students, those type of things? 
Sure. Uh, everybody's going to get tired of hearing me talk. But um, so prior to COVID, we actually had a partnership with um, Eastfield and they brought um, instructors over to our school and uh, had all the parents that wanted to learn English. They had English classes and they were learning English. We also had um, a business um, person that would come and have computer classes for our parents where they were able to work on resumes and spreadsheets and Microsoft, whatever they wanted to learn um, on the computer. Um, and then we also were planning to have um, monthly um, classes based on whatever they needed. Those were things that would happen every week, but then having a monthly subject they wanted to um, learn or expand on. And then for my, my students with this new building of all this innovation, um, I want to see everybody in the makerspace where they are using 3D printers, um, where they are building things from pre-K-3. They can build things with the um, Legos. We actually have coding Legos that they use all the way to where we have some coding things where they can actually design and build their own um, Starbucks um, coffee maker. And that's all stuff that we're capable for. And if my kids know anything, they know Miss Falcon loves her Starbucks. So that's something that um, I would like them to be able to do. And they don't have to build Starbucks, but whatever they want to build. And we have a lot of innovative kids out there and we have the tools. It would be just nice to have the space. And I would like my pre-K threes who are going through um, dual language um, two way, which they're learning Spanish and English. At the same time, I want them to learn the digital world and be able to walk out there and compete in any middle school, high school or college they want to go to or career. Jacqueline, is, is, uh, are there any comments from the community in the chat box? Um, yes. I think it'll be, let's see, let me double check here. No, so far, everyone's just agreeing with the, with the principal saying go principal um, on, okay. the, on, the, on the everyone around. We think that um, Principal Falcone is being a great representative for Urban Park and capturing her community's um, voice, sharing the community's voice. And I want to say bravo to you on the innovative programs and the way you're um, really challenging and, and setting up our future, our scholars for success. Uh -huh. What great program is going on in Urban Park? Thank you. It takes a village and we're all doing it together. But I'm telling you, I have the best students in Dallas ISD, the best family and the best community. They're showing you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jacqueline, if, if there's no other um, comments from the community in the chat box, I'm not sure if there's others online that might want to speak. Um, but if there's not, we can move on to the last section. I think we're I think we're good to move forward. Okay. Awesome. So this last piece is a virtual visual taste test activity, and it's nothing that we're going to do tonight. But I do want to explain the instructions. So I know that we're all virtual right now, and um, mostly because of the pandemic. But when we did this taste test. Uh, for Hawthorne Elementary School, we had uh, eight boards, um, and each board had uh, a very a variety of photographs. Uh, each board was also uh, dedicated to a particular theme. So maybe it was architecture, exterior architecture, maybe it was outdoor learning, maybe some of it was collaboration, maybe one board was dedicated to transparency. But what we do is we ask the, the teachers and the students and the community um, to uh, put their dots. Um, everyone has their own color coded dots and put their own dots on whatever photographs um, they, they liked. Um, they didn't have to have a strong reason. Uh, it could be because one uh, interior environment, environment was very colorful um, or they might have put dots on uh, a photograph that was very muted and warm and had a lot of earth tones. <coughs> um, but they could put their dots on, on any photograph that they wanted. Um, and it really helped give us kind of a visual sense on the personality and the attitude of the community as it related to architecture, which, was, which is what we do, which is what we're going to create for this community. But we can't do this in person, so we have to find a way to do it virtually. <clears throat> so moving on to the next. <clears throat> so we created an online survey, 
uh, Jacqueline and her team will be able to send this out to all the community members, all the, the teachers and parents um, that uh, are connected to this school. And we've got a series of questions and a series of our own photographs. And the link down at the bottom of the screen <clears throat> is the link that Jacqueline will send out. And all you'll have to do is you'll, you'll click it and it'll take you to an online web-based uh, survey. A lot of the uh, pages that you see on the survey will look very similar to the pages that I've replicated on the screen. So you'll have a, a front introduction page that will describe what the survey survey's intent is and what we're trying to, to capture. It talks about the, the bold, innovative, and generational um, <clears throat> idea that Dallas ISD is doing with their community workshops. It'll have a series of questions uh, like you see in the middle, and then it'll have a series of questions with photographs. So <clears throat> when you get the link, I think we'll, we'll keep the survey up for about a week and we'll be able to collect everyone's opinion, everyone's ideas all together. Um, so I know if people weren't able to, uh, to attend or participate in tonight's uh, uh, design charrette, they'll certainly be able to do that on, on this uh, virtual taste test. So I wanna just walk everyone through uh, what this is gonna look like just so they're not caught off guard. So again, you'll have a page that talks about the instructions and you know our, the DISD schools are aiming to develop all students with all the following skills, communication, collaboration, technology, problem solving, creativity, flexibility, adaptability, just all the, the things that Ms. Falcone mentioned. <clears throat> so the first one we wanna capture is, are you a parent? Uh, of one or more students from Urban Park? Are you a student? Uh, are you an employee? Are you a teacher? Or are you uh, someone else that doesn't fit into those categories? So we wanna, we wanna collect the data on who's actually doing the survey. The second question is, are you a... Um, the third question is, when you think of the 21st century school, what words come to mind? to help reinforce. So again, it kind of goes back a little bit to the word association activity. So anyone that wasn't able to uh, uh, participate in the, the activity for tonight, they'll be able to do it through this survey. <clears throat> Sustainable goals for Urban Park might include, and they've got a series of, of answers and they could choose all that apply, you know, energy, uh, local materials, healthy building materials, Question number five is the new Urban Park Elementary School should be focused on what? So it should be focused on uh, collaboration, technology, welcoming, traditional, modern. Uh, number six, select a photo or design style that best describes your ideas for architectural design materials and color. So could, you might like something that's a little bit more hill country. You might like something that's a little bit more modern and colorful. Select the photo or design style that best describes your idea for outdoor learning spaces. So you can see some spaces that are covered or some spaces that are open with trees, spaces that have benches, spaces that have uh, gardens for the community to come and do um, gardening projects. Um, the net eight, question number eight is about interior design material and color. Do we like spaces that are very, very colorful like C and D or spaces that are a little bit more muted like maybe F and G? Interior transparency, trying to get uh, a sense of what the community thinks about transparency, whether it's okay to see into the cafeteria from the corridor or do we wanna to try to bring in light into spaces, but diffuse, dif diffuse the, the visual so you can't see uh, behind, whether you see, like you see in photo F or photo C. Um, student collaboration, what photos appeal to you from a student collaboration standpoint, whether it's uh, open in spaces like H and I or behind closed uh, walls like D. Photo D. And then uh, question 11 is about flexible learning spaces. So trying to understand uh, what the community's idea is for flexibility, whether it's garage doors like you see in D and F or walls that collapse and can move and, 
uh, have two smaller spaces become one space like you see in photo G or I. Number 12 is about student-centered furniture. So just trying to understand kind of what the furniture and how the students learn and behave. Question 13 is about technology uh, enabled learning spaces. So trying to just understand uh, the community's thoughts behind how technology should be uh, integrated into the learning process. 14, uh, next generational libraries and maker spaces. We touched on this with Ms. Falcone. So how should that library and the media center and the, the maker space uh, feel and how should it interact with one another? And again, these um, putting your dots or your vote in the virtual taste test, you don't have to have a strong reason on why you're selecting a photograph. Um, it, it could be just because you like the color or, or you like the shape of a light fixture. And then the last one is about uh, school branding and student engagement. This is why we asked uh, about the Panther mascot. So trying to see how we can celebrate um, the, the legacy of Urban Park and maybe the Peacock, but also try to uh, celebrate, celebrate the creed of the, the proud Panthers that like Ms. Mal Balcone mentioned as well. So these are just some photographs from other schools that we've done where we try to bring that school spirit uh, inside the building and try to uh, create a lively uh, interior environment. And I think that is it. Um, again, uh, Jacqueline will be able to send out the, uh, the survey and we'll have it up for about a week uh, just to make sure all the parents and all the families and all the community members um, that are part of Urban Park have a chance to uh, log in and click on the link and, and share your thoughts based on this survey, especially since we didn't have uh, a lot of people uh, be able to participate this evening. Great. We're so glad that you took the time out to actually participate in this. Uh, for those of us in Zoom, I have play, I have posted, um, um, shared the link in the chat room, um, and we will be sending the information out um, to the principal to share with her community. Also, if you're one of the parents for a school for um, Urban Park, you'll be getting a school messenger with information on how to participate in this survey as well. Um, later on this week. And if you're joining us on Facebook, we did include a link as well uh, for the virtual visual taste test. And just as a reminder, you can keep track of this and all bond projects uh, for Bond 2020, our new schools, at www.dallasisd.org forward slash bond 2020. The survey link as well as the recording for this particular meeting will be shared there as well. So please please, please feel free to share with family members, community members who were unable to participate and join us tonight. With that being said, um, Mr. Alfred, um, if you wanted to share with us on next steps, where we're going from here. Yes, just trying to get it off mute. So yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Glenn Partners for putting on this charade. I think we got a lot of good information and we're gonna come up with our, our great big ideas. So uh, we're going to give the architect team uh, a couple of months to come up with a, a scheme so we can visualize and kind of develop and put some shape and form to some of the ideas we heard today. Uh, so my goal for this group would be uh, right in mid-December to come back and kind of get feedback and see what we've developed and hopefully take the next step forward. So thank you, Ms. Bell. Thank you so much. And also, just to ensure that we do, or we are reaching as many community members as we, are, as we can with this particular project, we will also be emailing it out to um, persons that are close to um, Urban Park as well for additional input on the activity on the taste test as well. Um, next, um, Trustee Henry, you've been with us tonight. Do you have any thoughts or um, closing remarks you'd like to share? No, I don't. I just want to thank everyone for their time this evening. Uh, I can tell there's been a lot of thoughtful planning going into this presentation, particularly engaging the community, which I hope we continue to do throughout the process. You were right earlier from the board's perspective, um, getting it done on time so we can get our kids into the nice facility as soon as possible. And that cost would be wonderful. <laughs> but we also want an exceptional facility, so that's a balance. And thank you again, um, Trustee Henry, for your leadership um, in Dallas ISD. 
and your support of Urban Park and other schools in your district. And finally, uh, we've heard the voice before, and she certainly is a great voice for her community and for her uh, for her uh, community of learners at Urban Park. So, um, Principal Falcon, if you'd like to have closing remarks. All right, I just want to thank everybody for joining tonight. Um, I think you get my passion for my students and my school and my community, but it's um, well deserved um, and they deserve nothing but the best. So thank you. Thank you for everybody coming tonight and for all the incredible ideas. I can't wait to see how the taste test comes out. And um, I just know we're going in the right direction for Urban Park. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to December. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ms. Bell. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Glenn Partners. Thank you, um, the project team. And thank you, um, the community, not just for joining us tonight, but also for your support of Dallas ISD and to the voters who made um, replacement schools and renovations and updates to our 200-plus um, campuses possible through your vote and support for the bond projects. So with that being said, we wish you a good evening and hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Good night. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat>